Welcome to the last lesson in physics. You made it through, guys. You've done optics. So we're going to learn all about how lenses and the two types, converging and diverging lenses, and how to draw simple lens diagrams with those lenses. And then why do we need to know about lenses? Because what do we use them for in the real world? So what is a lens? A lens is a transparent object with at least one curved side that causes light to reflect. The terms plane, concave, and convex are used to describe lenses as well as mirrors, but lenses have two sides. So one class causes light to diverge or spread out. The other class causes light to converge or meet in one place. So in the diverging lenses, it is very thin in the middle and thick at the ends. Thick at the ends, thin in the middle, thick at the ends, thin in the middle. A converging end has narrow ends and it is widest in the middle here. So a converging lens, when the light comes in, it bends and meets at one central point. They are always thickest in the middle and they can either have two convex surfaces or one convex and one flat. Diverging lenses, when the rays come in, they bend away from each other, so they spread out. They run parallel and never touch each other. And it's thickest at the ends and thinner in the middle. So converging, they meet at one point. Diverging, they spread out. So when you're actually drawing these ray diagrams, a lot of stuff is happening. There's actually it's coming from the air and then it refracts here. Then it goes from a medium like the glass or the plastic out into the air again and refracts again. So instead of having to draw normal and bend and normal and bend, we kind of cheat. We say there's a central line. It's kind of like an optical center. And we just pretend the rays go straight into there and then bend out. So same thing in the diverging lens. When we have this optical center and we're just gonna pretend the light goes straight into the middle and only does the one refraction. So the optical center is the point in the middle. So this line here indicates where the optical center is of the lens. The principal focus F is the point at the, um, the principal axis where all the light is going to converge upon. And the secondary principal axis, F prime, is on the same side as the lens as the object, so where the incident rays are coming from. And these are always the same distance apart. So if this is five, this is 10. Or sorry, if this is five, this is five. If this is 10, this is 10. They're always the same distance. So a converging lens, the light is going to go straight into the optical center, and then they're all gonna bend and meet at the principal focus. And the principal focus is always on the opposite side of the incident rays, wherever the light is coming from. So the three rules we're going to use is the first, same as before, a light ray coming parallel to the principal axis will bend and go through the primary focal point. A light that goes, rule two is that if something comes in through the secondary focal point, it's going to reflect parallel to the principal axis. And rule three, anything that goes straight through the optical center just keeps going straight. So this is how we're going to draw our diagram. So in case one, when it's beyond 2f prime, or this is the secondary focus, this is, so this was five, this is 10, this is past that. Our first one that we're gonna draw is rule number one. So in rule number one, our incident ray is coming in parallel. It goes right to the optical center. This is our optical center. And then it refracts down through the primary focal point. The second line we're going to draw is the one where it goes straight through the optical center. And then it just keeps going straight. It doesn't do any kind of bending. The third line we always draw is it goes, the incident ray goes through the secondary focal point and then it refracts parallel to the principal axis. Where they all meet is the image. 
And if we describe this image, it is smaller than our original, so our original is bigger. It is upside down, so we say it is inverted. It's located between the uh, primary focal point and this twice the primary focal point. And it's what we consider a real image because it's on the opposite side of the incident rays. In case two, we are at twice the secondary focal point. So if this was five, this is if this is five centimeters. This is twice that, so it's 10 centimeters. So we're going to do our three lines again. First line, we draw parallel to the principal axis, and that refracts down through the primary focal point. Second one, we're going to go straight through the optical center, and it just keeps going straight. And then the third line, we're going to go through the secondary focal point, and it refracts parallel. And then where all they where they all meet is the image. And let's look at this image. So if we look at the object and the image, it's the same size, it's upside down, it's at this twice the focal point, and it is also considered a real image. In case three, when it's located in between the two, we're gonna do our three lines again. So we draw first parallel straight into the mirror, straight into the lens. At the middle, it bends to the primary focal point. Second line we draw, goes straight through the optical center, straight through the optical center. And then the third line we draw goes down to the lens, and then it bends parallel. And where they meet is the image. And the image here is bigger. It's still upside down. It's inverted. It's past 2F, and it is a real image. So those should be really easy to draw. Again, we have case four, it's at F. Here, when we draw our first one and reflect it, and when we go through the optical center, these are parallel. They will never, ever meet. So no, mid, no image will form. And so when we describe it, we just say no image, no image, no image. If it's in front of F, when we draw our first line in, and then it reflects through F. We now extend this back for a reflected image. Second one is going to go through the optical center. And then we're going to reflect that back too. And where the two meet is the image. Now in this case, it's bigger, it's upright, it's beyond 2F, and it is virtual. So this is a big difference here, virtual. Because it's on the same side as the object. Diverging lenses have a thick end and a thin middle, and they are going to take all the parallel light rays and they're going to spread them apart, make them go away from each other so they never meet. And because they do this, we're going to, again, have our line come into the optical center and then they bend, come into the optical center and then it bends. But because they are never going to meet, we have to extend those refracted rays back. We're extending the refracted weight rays back, and where they meet here is, I'm gonna do that in a different color, sorry. Where they meet here is the image. And so, because of that, all diverging lenses make a smaller image that's always upright, it's on the same side of the object, and it is virtual. And the image is always closer to the lens than the object. So if the object moves further away, the image becomes smaller. So this is what a lens diagram looks like for you. It, we put it in, it goes away. We, this is the dotted line as we're extending it back straight to the focal point. It goes through the optical center 
This one, if it goes straight in, it reflects parallel. And again, we extend that one back. I'm not going to ask you guys to draw any of the diverging lenses. You just have to know how to draw the converging lenses, the first ones that we did. So why do we care about this? What do lens applications have to do with our daily life? Well, the first one is the camera. The camera uses a converging lens. So the converging lens is going to take light rays and pinpoint them onto one small area and it's smaller inverted and it's a real image. It takes in light from large distant objects and forms smaller real images on film or a sensor such as a digital camera. As the object changes location, so does the image, but it will always be somewhere between f and 2f. So if you want a sharp image, you need to move the lens in and out. So that's why we do focusing. So here's one of the originals. So it's the idea that as the image is coming in, this ray is traveling straight down to here and the light is coming from this object and it travels straight up there. So that makes the image upside down. So again, this tree, if the light's coming from the sun this way, it's coming into the camera. And then this light is coming into the camera. So the bottom of the tree is at the top of the, the film. So everything we capture in a camera is upside down. The movie projector is taking a very small object from film or a digital media and it projects a large inverted real image on a screen. The image is larger than the object and so the film must be located between the secondary focal point and the secondary 2f. Film must be loaded into the projector upside down so you see the upright image. If you load it right side up then what you'd see on the screen is upside down. But now most theaters use digital projection to get the 3D and HD so this is basically how it would work. The light source is projecting and it gets refracted, refracted. And then when it comes through, the image is way bigger. This is a tiny, tiny image and a really big image over here. The magnifying glass. This is the simplest optical device. It's basically a converging lens. So that means it's thickest in the middle and the uh, where the objects located between f prime and the lens there is no real image produced and the refracted rays diverge to our eyes and we project those rays backwards forming an enlarged virtual image located on the same size of the lens come on move so this is our magnifying and if the objects here and we're looking at it, it makes it look like it's a lot bigger. So it blows it up. The microscope, we aren't going to get to use. Hopefully you use the must uh, in grade nine. Um, it's an arrangement of two converging lenses. So we have light that's usually at the bottom of the microscope, a lamp. And then the light comes up through our, our glass slide where we have our specimen. And it's going to go through an objective, and then it has a lens, and then it has an eyepiece. And so it gets, the light gets refracted here, here, and then again. And so what we see is a blow up. And depending on the objective lenses that we are looking through and the power of the eyepiece, so if this is four times and this is 10 times, the, it'll make the image look 40 times bigger. In most high schools, the lenses that we use are 4 and 10 or 4 and um, 40. I'm trying to think. No, this is usually 10 times. So we usually have 4 times, 10 times, and 40 times. So we either blow it up four times, 100 times, or 400 times. So we could look at something on the microscope and make it look 400 times bigger to our eyes by how it goes through these lenses. 
The refracting telescope is the same principle as the compound microscope, but the object's much further away. And so the incident rays passing through the objective lens are considered to be parallel, and it produces two enlarged inverted images. One is a real image, but we don't actually see that one. We only see the virtual one. So in a telescope, the light is coming through first the objective lens, and then it comes through the eyepiece and goes to our eye. So it gets refracted first through this objective lens, and then again through here. In this one, they're using one, two, three, four different lenses to do the refracting. And that's it. You have now officially listened to your last lesson in physics. Next week, we're going to start biology. I hope to talk to you at our weekly meeting this week. And if you have any questions or need any help with anything, all you have this week is one assignment and your final project. Hope you have a good day. Bye.